Okay, November 2nd, 2011. This is another installment for Edible Acres. The Cobb Cottage. So, things have moved along quite a bit, I guess. Although it feels like it's taken forever. Got hundreds of hours of labor into this thing so far, but now there is a roof starting to form. Um, and it's much bigger. <laughs> than it was probably even in the last video, definitely from the first video. So it went from being this little space in here, which was around 10 and a half or 11 by uh, 16 or 17 on the east and west, 16 or 17 on the north and south, 10 or 11. Um, it kind of changes a little over, over the course of it. But anyway, it's gone from that to now having an additional eastern extension. You can see I'm starting to get the roof metal on there now. And man, is that a lot of work. Uh, cut down each of these white ash trees, trying to do like a really thoughtful thinning timber stand improvement in our woods and take out just a few of the white ash that are competing. But man, as straight as they look in the forest, you get them up on the roof and there's all sorts of interesting twists and turns. These are all 18 inches on center from one another. Uh, they are strong enough to hold my weight at any point without the slightest bit of bowing because uh, they're spanning shorter distances. They're only going 60 inches between these roof members. Let's take a look at it from the other side. It's a little bit of a disjointed video this time, but just kind of winging it. Um, yeah, so you can see the, the tops here are made with split locust. It looks a little wonky, but it works. I think I'm showing this properly. Let's see. Uh, these are, where are we? These are heavy duty screws that I pre-drilled and drove down deep into the locust post. They're kind of very roughly mortised sitting on top there. And then there's straps to keep it from flexing in any dimension. And that's relatively strong. And then the ash are all pre drilled and then driven with really heavy five inch long galvanized ring shank uh, nails. They're you know, like a few ounce, maybe an ounce a piece. So it's probably going to be one of the more expensive parts of the whole building. It's probably maybe like a hundred dollars worth of screws and nails and things up there, but it matters because it needs to be really strong. Um, let me get up on the roof and show you some more of that. Okay, so you can see I'm sitting up here on the ash. You can see these joints I was talking about. Kind of wonky looking. You know, there's only so much I can do. These The screws were flathead, and if I had square driven screws, I could have gone a lot deeper with these big ones. But, you know, four inch long screws, as much as I pre-drilled, it's still locust on locust. And <laughs> I put a ton of beeswax on there, and they still killed about three or four uh, flathead driver bits before it's all said and done. So the strapping is doing some work as well. But anyway, you can see the ash. They've got these nails. Some of them are on the smaller side. In the thicker pieces, they're five inch long. and the thinner ones, they're three and a half inch long uh, nails because the nails have a little bit more shear strength to them. So in case there's ever some sort of pressure this way, it won't be able to shear them off. Um, you can see it's my like a little work table up high, some old slab wood pieces, chisel, and handsaw and then this purlin stock. So these are the rafters, the white ash. The purlin is being comprised of offcuts. It's the only nearly dimensional lumber I have in this. These are offcuts of uh, black walnut and black locust that are about an inch thick. They vary so I can have some um, options as far as trying to course over this. You can see the roof metal is actually coming on relatively straight, pretty darn straight, all things considered, considering there's almost no dimensional anything underneath it. Um, the pitch is not as much as I'd like, but it's still going to drain any liquid state stuff. Ice and snow is going to sit up there as long as it pleases, um, but this will all be a living roof anyway. Now we're ending up with 14 foot roof metal by, this is going to end up being, so there's an east extension over there, you're looking down into the main structure through here. My father's been laying in tons of stone. It's coming along really nice. 
and then there's a western wing. It's a little hard to see from here, but that's another nine or ten feet. So the whole structure ends up being, I think, about 36 feet long. So now we're up to around almost 400 square feet of structure that's covered by roof. I figure I've got enough roof metal to do 400 square feet. Why not do all of it? Maybe it's not all living space, but now I've got, you know, shed wings, I've got guest room spaces, a lot of protection for the cob that's going to be going underneath. And you can see there's the urbanite stem wall still needing to get cob on there. It is November 2nd. It's getting less and less likely that I'm living in this thing this winter, but I need to do it right. So, uh, I don't know. We'll keep, keep having weather like this. It's almost 60 degrees today. Uh, once the roof's on, I can start cobbing some more. You can see there's the first run of cob down below. It's firming up really nicely. If I get him straw bales embedded in there, it could go along pretty quickly. You can see there's some more cob stuff over here. Uh, the mixing area at least. I'm going to do a really quick video showing how these roof members work out. This is how I tested them. And I think you might get a kick out of it. High tech stress test for white ash. Minimal bounce. Actually, there's none. This one might have to redo the screw on it. Or the nails, I should say. Yeah, there's just no flex in this thing. So, I don't know, am I mimicking a heavy windstorm or snowstorm? I don't know, but at least this is pretty fun. That's that.